your passion and all your problems will be resolved in your life. And you'll never have to work again because you're happy. This is one of the biggest loads of sh** that I've heard in my entire life and it is a lie that is perpetuated throughout the entire self-help community. Which is why in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the four reasons that following your passion will keep you forever poor. Now in all fairness, Michael Jordan followed his passion, Rihanna followed her passion, and even Bill Gates followed his. So if you're an artist or an athlete, of course, follow your passion. But to be honest, these people don't even fully follow their passion. They still have to conform to society to get the results that they want. To put it simply, they have to be practical about their craft in order to get the results that they want. And because of this, they'll simply never be entirely free. And this brings us to reason number one of why following your passion will keep you poor, which is that successful people put practicality first. And what I mean by this is that if you ever go up to somebody who owns a supercar or a private jet, things of that sort, and you ask them how they made their money, they'll never say, oh, I started a fashion brand or a music label. They'll always say something along the lines of, I have a waste removal company or I own a worldwide plumbing service. And do you think that these people when they were 10 year olds were like, I'm gonna be a titan in the plumbing industry, a mover and shaker, and I'm gonna help people with their plumbing. Of course not. Look, I'm telling you right now, the only way that you can truly make real money is to provide a service or a product that the market either really needs or wants. And let me just break this for you. Nobody cares that you want to start the 974th sustainable gym wear brand in your state when you have 476 followers on your Instagram page. You need to solve a problem for somebody and that is the only thing that should be on your mind when trying to create wealth, which is how can I solve a problem for somebody in the best way possible? Because when you solve somebody's problems either through a product or a service, you get paid. And because of this, you need to detach from this idea that the problem that you solve has to be touchy-feely and all of these things. And this is exactly why you need to prioritize finding that gap in the market, whether it be a product or a service, and then just offer it. And I know a lot of you guys are going to have the question of, oh, well, what kind of business do I start? Things like that, which is exactly why only a couple weeks ago, I released a video on seven different side hustles that can get you started. Anyways, reason number two, which is that more than likely, your passion will change with experience in life. And what I mean by this is, listen, you may be 22 right now, and you love fashion. You spend all your time researching and learning about it, and you want to make a career out of it. And then a couple years from now, after you've worked on that, you start to drift away from it, and you realize that your true passion is tennis, and you want to become a great tennis player. So you spend hours and hours at a tennis club, and you start to compete and win a little bit of money, all this good stuff, but you do this for a while. Then, four years down the road, a woman approaches you about real estate. So you start to get into that, and eventually you quit tennis because real estate is your passion now. And out of this whole story, my point is that your passion can continually change over and over, which kind of means that you just end up flaking on a lot of these things and never taking them super seriously for a long enough period of time, which means, and I'm gonna be a little bit harsh right now, but you're never going to really get anywhere with them. Now, the next reason that following your passion will keep you poor is because of emotions. Now look, emotions are a very beautiful thing and you should cherish them and experience them as you walk through life. But when it comes to business, I wanna be very, very clear about this. If you follow your passion, emotions will be your biggest weak point. And this is because you need to look at things with logic and avoid having tinted vision when making important business decisions. And if you ever speak to somebody who started a passion business, they kind of just live in their own world. They don't always look at the market and how it's responding to their product or service. Sometimes they'll just throw their hands up in the air and say, oh, people just don't get it. In reality, they're too close to their baby, their business, right? And because of this, they cannot adapt quick enough to the market. In my businesses, I'll adapt, I'll change, I'll chop this up and move this around so that it works for the market that we're currently in. And this is very common amongst ultra successful people. They aren't necessarily focused on the route of their business, they're just focused on a final destination. Now don't get me wrong, I obviously have my code of ethics that I follow all throughout my life, and especially that I will never break in business. But as long as I don't break them, I'm willing to change and pivot 
based upon the current market that we're in. And in life, if you ever wanna become successful, you'll end up realizing soon enough that emotions are your biggest enemy. Like I said, emotions are great. You wanna cherish them, right? But your career is simply not a place that they should be. Now the last reason, and this is probably the most depressing out of all of them, but it couldn't be more true. And this is that as soon as you start making money from your passion, you really don't enjoy it that much anymore. And listen, I'm speaking from experience here. At one point, I wanted to start my own fitness brand because I'm big into working out and I love to keep myself in shape, right? But as soon as I started having to deal with other people's fitness plans and all this stuff, it became a nightmare, which is exactly why I didn't get very far with it. And of course, it all comes back to the simple fact that you are going to have to optimize for what works. You may sell something that you love, but it doesn't make any money. So you, at one point, you're going to have to sell something else that you probably don't love to make any money at all. I mean, even if you look at people like The Rock or Kevin Hart, sure, they make products that they love probably, but they also, at the end of the day, are still going to push out the products that are going to make them the most amount of money. And this all comes back to the fact that when you have a passion business, there will always be a constant battle between practicality and passion. And for me at least, I've come to the realization that it's important to keep your passions away from your business that way, you still enjoy them. And I mentioned it before, but if you know me, then you know that I love working out. And I certainly could bring some money on the side, teaching people how to do different workout routines or stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the fact that I wouldn't enjoy my passion anymore because it's now become my business. So this is exactly why I think you should keep your passion completely away from your business. And one small thing that I keep seeing online kind of relating to this is to keep your significant other out of your business as well. And I see it all the time where people will involve them and then it just gets really messy and you look at them differently and it almost never works out. So just keep them out of it. So I hope this video woke you up to the great passion lie that is spread all throughout the internet and is constantly talked about. But now it's time for you to start making some money, which is why in this video, I describe the best way to start making money online today in only a matter of a few weeks. So with that said, thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the very next one.